So, just over two weeks ago, I went to Zamboanga City to renew my uh, uh, tourist visa, as per usual. There were no problems whatsoever. However, I had to fill out another form. It's a new form. Your name, your address, um, the date you arrived in the Philippines, what's the purpose of you being here. So I put, I live with my partner and my child. And that was it. I filled out the form, just a standard form, signed and dated it, no problem whatsoever. It's a two month extension because I think you can't get the six month extensions any longer. In fact, I know you can't. So it's a bit of a pain every two months having to travel four hour drive to Zamboanga City. However, you can renew your tourist visa online now. So that's a great help. But we go there because we also do some shopping at the shopping mall. So it's not such a bad thing. But yeah, just to let everybody know, there's no real change when you renew your tourist visa. It's just simply filling out a new form and the reason you're here. Like I said, I had no trouble whatsoever. There were no questions and, well, why are you here? And like I said, I just filled out on the form. I live with my partner and our child. And that was it. I was in there no longer than 10 minutes. Luckily, where I go in Zamboanga City, the Immigration Bureau, there's never a queue. Occasionally there's a few people in there, but there's never a queue. We always get seen straight away. We know the staff in there. They're really nice, really helpful. And that was it. So if anybody's worried because they hear things online about their toughening up on tourist visas, I think you'll find that's a load of BS. They're not toughening up if you're here legitimately. It's the same as before. You just fill out another form and that's it. You pay your money, you show your usual ID, like your passport, etc. And then you're out of there for another two months. Now my three years will end um, next April, the end of April. That would be three years since I came to the Philippines. So unless I'm married by that time, I'll have to do what they call, is it, um, I don't know what the name is, a, a flight run where you leave the country for 24 hours and come back. But hopefully I will be married by then. <laughs> My uh, ex-wife, um, she's sent me, well, I'm still waiting because she sent it via post. The original divorce papers apostled and notarized. And before she sent it, I checked with our lawyer with a screenshot. Is that all that's required? And she said, yeah, that's everything that's required. So I just wait, it would take two, three weeks to arrive, probably. That's what happened last time. And then I go from there. And the thing was, you know, when I was in the UK, before I came here, I contacted the British Embassy in Manila several times. This was during the COVID period, several times. 
and I said, do I require to get the divorce papers notarized or whatever? No, no, no. I explained my situation, how I got married in 2006 to a Filipina in the Philippines. Do I need to then get this, that divorce paper apostled? Any, no, 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 they assured me. So I didn't really, I, there was a part of me that thought, don't even listen to what they say, be safe, just go to a, a lawyer in the UK, get everything done, but I didn't. So hopefully everything pans out right in the end. So yeah, going back to the tourist visa. So long as you've not overstayed or there's any issues, when you go there to renew your, your tourist visa, there should be no problems. Like I say, where I go is really a lovely place. The staff are so helpful, so friendly. You know, really friendly, always smiling. Never, ever have I had an issue there. You know, if, if there's something I don't quite understand on the form or not sure where I put my signature, or print my name, they, you know, tell me. It's a really nice place, you know? I can't speak for every immigration bureau. Maybe it's different in different places, staff are different, but I've never, ever had an issue. The fee was the same, I can't remember what the fee is, but that hadn't gone up. So, if you see any videos online that are saying, oh, it's now more difficult and there could be problems ahead, don't believe any of it. It's all bullshit. It's all crap. To get the views on their channels. You know, if you've overstayed and you haven't paid, yeah, there's going to be issues. But if you're bona fide here, and you haven't been here for three years or more, there are no issues whatsoever. Like I said, you just fill out a new form, put your details in, and that's it. So that's just to reassure people. Now it's pouring with, well, it's not pouring with rain, it's raining quite persistently at the moment. But hey ho, who cares? I'm just glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here, not in the West. I don't think, you know, if I had to go back and live in the UK, I just think that would be the culture shock. You know, yesterday I was talking about the Philippines and it's what you make it and the culture's different. But you know what, I'm more used to this culture now than I would be if I returned back to the United Kingdom. You know, that's, it's not the old United, it's not the old Great Britain that I grew up in. It's a different world now there. And I don't know if I could cope with the changes there. I couldn't really cope with it when I was living there. The changes were so rapid and terminal. None of it exists the way I remembered. Yes, I understand things progress in life. They always have done and always will do. Nothing ever stays the same. That's, that's cool. But when they change for the sake of changing, and they don't change in a positive way. It's always, always in a negative manner. That's what I found hard. That was just a reach too far for me. Here, I don't struggle with any culture change because I don't really know what the culture change is here. You know, listen, it's going to be different for different people. Depends what Filipina. Who's this guy? There's a guy that's just coming. I wonder if it's Shoppy. Uh, I might have to terminate this video. There's a guy on a motorbike there. 
and my fiance is playing with the baby in the spare room so she won't hear so I'll have to come down yeah I don't struggle at all yep he's coming here hi hold on uh, oops. let's see who he is uh. Hold on, one moment. Uh, let's take my shoes off because they're soaking wet. I have to stay with the baby while my fiance goes and see. There's a guy here. Stay here. Stay here, Drake. Stay here, stay here, baby. Huh? He came, oh, he's not for us. He came up here. Oh, okay. He wasn't for us. <laughs> so let me put my outside shoes back on because it's soaking wet. I thought he was uh, a parcel delivery from Shopee. Yeah, so going back to the culture, I don't find the culture a challenge at all here. And as I was explaining, I think it depends <clears throat> where you live, the Filipina you are with and their family it depends what kind of like anything when you're back in the west okay i could live with a western woman and i can live next door to you and you're with a a western woman you know if you're american an american woman and they can be like chalk and cheese totally different oh i see what the guy is it's the land over there he's cutting the grass etc with a machete um, it doesn't mean to say because she's Western and the woman I'm with is Western they're going to be the same their families are going to be the same they'll be totally different and it's I think similar here you know if you've gone with a Filipina who's maybe from a poorer background and all her family are struggling or in poverty you're gonna endure a different situation than perhaps I do and the culture might be somewhat different you know every week you might get 20 30 of her relatives coming round. that doesn't happen to me yes we have her relatives coming round, but not en masse like that at the beginning when I first came here you know, they did come round quite a bit, but not so much now. And a few of them don't even live in this area anymore. They've moved to other parts. So, yeah, the, the culture, it just depends on who you're with and on where you are and, and how easily you adjust to the change of culture. Because... If you can make the adjustment pretty quickly, you just assimilate. Sure, there are things that are gonna be alien to you, but not that alien. I have to, I would struggle to really think what is alien here. You know, I don't like all the food here. I think that's fairly natural for a, a Westerner. Some of it I do eat. I've eaten balutes, you know, the egg. The duck egg thing, I didn't have a problem with that. Other things, I, not to my taste. 
in the UK there were plenty of things I didn't like that were English food but like I say I'm struggling to think in terms of culture what's what's impacting on me that is so weird that I can't adapt to I can't think of a damn thing you know I really cannot th but if I went back to the UK I just think it would hit me like a like a train a runaway train yes I would get used to it after a while after a fashion but it would take me a while to adapt back because of course it would have changed even from when I left you know the Philippines as I've always always stated is a really really great opportunity for some people to be able to change their lives for the better and that's the trap you're in when you're back in the West how the hell do you change your life for the better in the West if you stay there it's so expensive to live no matter where you are in the West no matter how hard you've saved over the years you're still chasing your tail in terms of having enough money to live the life you'd like and how do you meet someone Unless you're young, attractive, with a sprinkling of good luck, of course, also. You go on dating sites, waste of time. The same old, the same old. But here, whether you rent here or, or whatever you do here, so long as you've got the money to support yourself and your Filipina, so long as you found a decent Filipina here. That's all that really matters. Somebody made a comment yesterday, don't know who it was, I deleted it straight away. I talked rubbish. I don't know if he was Filipino. Well, everybody has their opinions, don't they? I give my opinion and it's not everybody's opinion people are different maybe he's a Filipino and he lives in a bit of poverty and what I said was rubbish to him I don't know but you know the one bit of truth I do think resonates is so long as you're financially stable so long as you're not 99 years old, so long as you've not got a severe health issue, this really is a golden opportunity, whether you come to live here with a Filipina or meet a Filipina, marry her and take her back home with you. It's an opportunity you just cannot duplicate purely by staying in the West and meeting a Western woman. Listen, some people do. They're lucky. But a lot don't. And as the years pass by, what the hell are you going to do? Seriously. I was saving my money, buying gold. And that was all nice and well and good. But you know, with inflation, yes, you have inflation here. Don't be fooled, you have inflation everywhere. But the prices were ridiculous in the United Kingdom. Really ridiculous. Unless I'd have won the lottery, things wouldn't really have changed. Yes, I got Bitcoin. But I wouldn't have wanted to sell any of that anyway. So that wouldn't have counted. But I wouldn't have been able to have afforded even an apartment in a half-decent area, in a garbage area, let alone a half-decent area. And my love life, 
match.com plentyoffish.com and the absolute garbage you meet on there and you really do meet garbage listen that's wrong there are probably some really good people some good women on there if you fit and if you don't fit they're garbage you got the nymphomaniacs on there just want sex just want sex but they dress up the profile as looking for a long-term relationship you got the time wasters on there they'll see your photo they'll go out with you once you got the bigger time wasters that'll go out with you several times and maybe you do meet someone and the relationship goes pear shape because they were weird you discovered and then before you know it another year has passed by and you weren't able to save in a hard fashion because you were flipping wasting your money going out with these time wasters so you're a year or two older and you're still lost in the matrix of the life you're living like I said the Philippines isn't for, uh, isn't for everybody some people might choose places like Thailand it's up to the individual but the Philippines can be I'm not saying it is I think it can be that golden opportunity to change your life As I've said, you do need a sprinkling of luck if you choose the wrong Filipina. If it turns out the Philippines is just not suited for you. If you come here and you've miscalculated your finances, things will go wrong because it's called reality. Would you go on vacation to another country and not take enough spending money with you? No, because you would do your research. Finding a Filipina, of course you can do all the research in the world and think you found the one and she later turns out to be a nightmare. Yes, that can happen. That can happen. That's why I always say you do need a sprinkling of luck in everything. You know, with a plane crash on your way here, you need a sprinkling of luck. Will you die at 55 years old? Or will you die well into your 90s? Everything, to some degree, is about luck. No matter what and how much research you do. And I'm not trying to make it sound like, huh, the Philippines ain't going to work unless you get luck and I'm not a lucky type. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. If you're sensible and do your research financially, what you're going to need per month. And also acknowledging there is inflation. Prices do go up here. If you look properly for a Filipina, be it online or boots on the ground here. The choice is yours. Of course, some people would argue it's better to be boots on the ground and meet someone. Maybe so, but not everyone can do that. Just be careful. If you see anything that you're not comfortable with, whether it's boots on the ground when you meet a Filipina or online, Try and investigate it as best you can, further. And then throw it out the window, not literally, the relationship, and move on. Because you've got to make this work. You've really only got one chance. That's not true. I had several chances, to be fair. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, it's about you. I've always said it's never about me. I'm here. I'm here, it's not about me anymore. I'm just talking, I ramble on. 
I talk bullshit much of the time. Because it's about me. But I try and give you that impetus to think I can do the same. Whatever the same for you is. Maybe you wouldn't buy a house or land because it's not yours, it's not in your name. And for you it's going to be renting. That's fine. You're going to do it your way. Not my way, your way. Not Frank Sinatra's way, but your way. You're not me, nor should you ever aspire to be me. You're you. Be the best version of you that's possible. Not the version of you that's always been trapped in a life you despise, but be the best version of you. Take that leap of faith and do as I did. Now, if that idiot's watching this video, you're talking rubbish. Good luck to you, my friend. I bet your life's not great, is it? You obviously don't have the mental capacity to leave the dull world you inhabit. But that's not what I want for you people. You can do, let me just go into the porch here. Because uh, my cam's gonna get, gonna get soaked. You can have a life that has to be better than, listen, I don't know you. I don't know your circumstances. There's me rambling on about a life better than you have now. I'm just assuming, and maybe my assumptions are wrong. I'm just assuming you're not happy with your life as it is. Just do the best you can. And if my videos help in some way, they're not a blueprint. You're not, you're not gonna listen to everything I say and follow it 100%. That's not the idea. It's, it's there to make you think, perhaps inspire you to go online and maybe initially meet a Filipina or to come here on vacation or, you know? Listen, I got inspired by watching the YouTube videos before I ever came here. But in the end, I had to do the work. When I came here, I came here as me, not any of the, not as any of the vloggers, what they told me was forgotten by the time I came here because it became reality. I didn't need the vloggers anymore. I didn't need to hear what they said. I didn't need to hear their opinions. It was my opinion now that counted, not theirs. But they provided a service, if you will, at the beginning. They were part of the research. It's all opinions. Depends where the vloggers live, what country they come from, what kind of person they are, because if they're here and they hate it here, their vlogs are gonna be very negative. So it's important not to watch one vlogger. You have to watch many, but ultimately none of them mean a damn thing. It's only what you experience once you come here. That's all that's important. Do I lead the most exciting life of any uh, expat? No, I'm happy. I, I'm happy being here. You know, the, the, I'm not saying I'm happy every single day. Nobody ever is, but I can go out now. I can go to town if I want and go to the shopping mall if I want. I enjoy going to the shopping mall. I enjoy buying my little bits and pieces. You know, I'm, I love soft drinks, Sprite and root beer and Diet Coke and, and potato chips and my chocolate and 
other foods I like to buy. Other people would say, you're dull, Phil. You don't do much. Everyone is different. Everyone is different. And that's a good thing. You wouldn't want to be me. I probably wouldn't want to be you. But I'm happy. I'm happier than I ever was back in the West. Getting up on a Monday, going to work, coming home at six o'clock in the evening, going on the internet, eating whatever I was eating, watching the videos on whatever videos I was watching on YouTube, going to bed, waking up in the morning, going back to work, the same old, the same old. I'm living now. I don't know how many years I've got left. I'm not an oracle. But no matter how many years, no matter how many minutes I've got left, I want to enjoy the autumn, the fall, as the Americans call it, of my life. You know, I think, God, had I still been in the UK, I'd still be working, and I wouldn't be getting any younger. I'd be over two years older than I was back then. I made the right decision. And it's for you all to take a look in the mirror and really decide what it is you want out of life. Not what I want out of life. Maybe you're bored of this video and you've turned the video off ages ago. It's a long one. Geez, I never meant to do it this long. But it's for you. It's for nobody else. I would say go forth and multiply, but not everybody wants to meet a Filipina and have kids. But you know what I mean. Go forth and enjoy life to the maximum. Really. For what else is there? What else is there? If you don't enjoy your life, what the hell has it all been for? What the hell has it all been for?